This is section 6.3 and we are going to take a look at probabilities in a normal distribution. If you'll recall, in 6.1 we reviewed how to find a z-score given the mean and the standard deviation of a normally distributed random variable. And in 6.2 we were given a z-score and we used Excel to find the area to the right or to the left or between two scores or to the outside in the tails. So essentially what we're going to do now is do all of that at the same time. So we're going to be given the information that we need to find a z-score and then we're going to use Excel to find the area um, indicated in the question. So let's just get started. Let's start by taking a look at area to the left or right in Excel. So again, this is going to be similar to what we just did in our last video. However, if you'll notice, I'm not given a z-score, I'm given the raw scores. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do I find a z-score. So if you'll recall, when we find a z-score, we find it by taking our observed value, which is x, minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation. That's the formula. So for the first question, and actually both questions are ones to the left, ones to the right, but both questions are using the same mean and the same standard deviation. So for my z-score, I'm simply going to use equal sign to let Excel know I'm dealing with a function. I'm going to put a parenthesis so that Excel calculates the, z, the uh, numerator of the z-score first, which is x, x is my observed value, which is 97, minus mu, which is the mean, which is 98.6, and then I close that parenthesis. That's my numerator. So if you need to think of the z-score as having those parentheses around it, that's great. Then I'm going to divide by the standard deviation, which is 0 0.73. And that is my z-score. Now before we find any areas or probabilities, let's think about our normal curve. This is telling me that 98.6 is here, and for every standard deviation, it's 0.73 degrees. And the value that I'm looking at is 97, and 97 would be down here somewhere. And that does make sense then that my z-score is negative. So it's always good to think about that. Now to find the area to the left, I'm simply going to use my norm s dist and use the z-score and cumulative. So what that's going to do is it's going to start at the value that I give it, which is the z-score. It's going to find the area to the left of that because the, remember that's what the norm s dist function does. Now, I want to show you another way that I can find the area. It's not going to give me the z-score, so I still need to know how to do that. Use the function, or use the formula, and then here I'm using the function norm s dist. I can also use the function norm dist, so this is not s dist. Remember the s stood for the standard normal curve. So if I'm just using a normal curve, I can double check my work by saying x is 97, so now I'm not using the z-score I calculated, I'm using 97. The mean is 98.6, the standard deviation is 0 0.73, oops, and yes, it's still cumulative. And if you'll notice, I get the exact same value. So is there a better way to do it? No. Um, it's whichever way you're most, most comfortable with. Now for the sake of projects, you're going to have to find the z-score, so whether or not you use that z-score to find the area to the left or right, that's up to you. Um, but again, you can either use norm s dist with the z-score or norm dist and use all of the raw scores. Let's look now at the second one, and then we'll look at how to hack Excel to work for you. What's the probability of a healthy adult having a body temperature more than 99.2? So if you'll recall, when we were dealing to the right, Excel only has the capability of finding area or probability to the left. And so I need to take one minus when I'm finding the area. But the z-score is exactly the same. It's still parentheses and then observed, 99.2, minus expected, 98.6, 
close the parentheses, divide it by the standard deviation, and get the z-score. The z-score is 0.82. That means it's just less than one standard deviation to the right, so it's somewhere in here. And I want to find the area to the right, which means I need to take one minus the area to the left. So I'm going to put equals one minus norm s dist, and then my value and one, because norm s dist finds the value to the left, and I want one minus that. Again, area to the right, if I did not want to find a z-score, I would just use norm dist. Make sure you put that um, period in there, norm dot dist, otherwise it screws Excel up. So x in this case would be 99.2, the mean would be 98.6, the standard deviation 0.73, and 1. Oops, and I forgot 1 minus. Always 1 minus when you're going to the right. So now we've done them both ways. Again, it's okay for you to set up Excel to do a lot of this work for you because it's just the same work over and over and over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an input box for x, which is my observed value, for mu, which is the mean, and for sigma. Then I set up a z-score formula to take the observed minus expected divided by the standard deviation. Note the parentheses. And then I set these up exactly the same way we just did. Norm s dist to the left is just norm s dist. To the right is 1 minus. Um, and it looks like I added an extra period in there. And then this is using the raw score instead. And you'll see that I'm going to get the same thing. So for the first one, which was 97, mu was 98.6, standard deviation 0.73. And if you'll notice, I got the same z-score. I got the same area to the left each time. And then if I change x to 99.2, then I get the same z-score, and then I get the same area to the right. Let's take a look now at the other types of questions. So we just looked at to the left and to the right, and now we want to look at between two values or in the tails. So for the first question, again, we're dealing with the same data set of 98.6 with a standard deviation of 0.73. So for the first question, we want to know the probability of between 98 and 99. So something like this. We're looking at a probability like this. Now, this would be very easy, except remember Excel only goes to the left. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probability to the left of 99, and I'm going to find the probability to the left of 98, and if I subtract the 99 and the 98, it's going to leave me with this space in the middle. So if I take all of this value and subtract just this tail, it will leave me with this little slice in the middle. So again, we did this before with z-scores, uh, and now we don't have z-scores, now we just have the regular value. So again, you will likely be asked to find the z-scores, and if you are, that's no problem, because we know how to find a z-score. We take the observed value, so I'm going to start with a 99, minus the expected, 98.6, close the parentheses, divided by the standard deviation, and then we do it again for the other value. And I'm going to actually just copy and paste, maybe, if it lets me. Let's try one more time. Control C, Control V. And on this one, I'm going to change it to 98. So, makes perfect sense that one of the z-scores is positive and one is negative because one's on each side of the mean. And then again, if I wanted to find the probability, I'm going to say equals norm s dist. And then my z-score, remember the larger, comma 1, minus norm s dist. And then my z-score, which is the smaller, comma 1, 
and that gives me my result. Just like on the last slide, we talked about, let me put Z score up here so we remember that's what that is. So this is the solution. But remember on the last slide, we talked about a different way to do it in a way that we wouldn't have to find the z-score. And so I could, as I said before, take norm dist instead of norm s dist, and then again, the larger value, and then the mean, and then the standard deviation, and one, and then subtract norm dist of the smaller value, 98, the mean is 98.6, the standard deviation is 0.73, and cumulative is one. And as you can see, I got the exact same solution, one way using the z-score and one way without. So again, which way is better? It doesn't matter. They both do the exact same thing. So just make sure that you're paying attention to instructions. If you have to find the z-score, not a bad idea to go ahead and use that to find the solution just because it's, you know, a shorter input. Um, before I do B or C, let's take a look over here. Again, you can hack Excel to do the work for you. I've got the bigger and the smaller, the mu, the sigma. This will find the first z-score, F10 minus F12 divided by F13, and this will take the smaller. And then again, for between, which is the one I just did for A, I use the exact same formula, the norm dist, of the smaller, and in fact, this could be norm s dist, and that leaves a little bit fewer for the input, and norm s dist, and then f16 and 1, because those are based on the z-scores, or I can do it without the z-scores. So now let's take a look at outsides, and again, Instead of finding, let's get rid of this silly picture. So instead of finding the area between, now I want the area on the outside. So again, I'm looking at something like this where I'm finding this area here and this area here. And the best way to do it is to just to find the two areas and then add them together. Um, now if it's Remember, we talked about if these two were the same distance from the mean, that would change things a little bit, um, but typically they're not going to be. So let's take a look at B first, and then C, we'll talk about how that one's the same but also different than B. So for B, we're saying, okay, 98.6 is here in the middle, and then 97.6 is obviously one away to the left, and 100.6 is two away on the right. And so again, it's going to be a different area on each side is really the only thing to point out there. And that's okay because I know to find the area to the left, and again, we just reviewed this. Um, first of all, I can find the two z-scores just as I did before. Uh, I'm gonna come up here and copy this and I'm gonna paste it twice, and then for the first one, I'm going to replace it with 97.6, and for the second one, I'm going to replace it with 100.6. And so now I have my two z-scores. Again, if I want to find the area to the left of the smaller value, I'm just going to use norm s dist, and then that smaller z-score comma one, and again, that would be the area right here. Sorry, I didn't think it was gonna highlight the whole thing. Just, just this part, okay? Now I need to add to that the other area. So I'm going to add to that, and remember to find the area to the right, use a parenthesis, and then one minus norm s dist, the z-score on the right. And that's all I have to do. So notice I'm just adding two areas together. Now I can do the same thing without z-scores. I'm not going to, but I would do it just the same way I did um, this one. Instead of norm s dist, I would use norm dist. And then 
enter the mean, the standard deviation. Uh, but since I already found the z-scores, we're going to stick with that. Uh, for outside, again, I did the same thing here. 1 minus norm dist. And again, these could be norm s dists. And then I wouldn't need that 0, 1. So I guess we should address that. The fact that I'm using norm s dist means that I don't have to enter a mean and standard deviation. But if I use norm dist and use 0 and 1, it's the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So it gives me the same value. Uh, so again, I could enter, um, I guess we didn't do this for the first one. Let's go ahead and look at the first one. 98, 99, mu is 98.6, and this is 0.73, and then it found the two z-scores, and then between, uh, I'm not sure why that's negative, 15, oh, because I put them in the wrong order, 99, 98, bigger than smaller, pay attention to your own instructions, and then for the second one, again, I could enter 100.6, and 97.6, and then on the outside, notice that gives me the same results. Now for C, C is actually a lot like B. What it's saying, and again, I'm going to draw you a beautiful picture, but what it's saying is if you have a normal model and you've got 98.6 in the middle, what's the probability that the temperature differs by more than one? So essentially it's saying this is 97.6, this is 99.6 because that's one in each direction. So it's basically saying find the area in the tails. And so I can do it exactly like that. I can just find the area in the tails. Uh, let me go ahead and just copy that again. I can find the z-scores by doing the exact same thing, 97.6 and 99.6. And notice the z-scores are the same, but the opposite sign. So I can just do exactly what I did here, and I encourage you to do that. But remember that these two areas are the same, so if you want to, and you don't have to, but if you want to, you can say two times and then find the area to the left of the lower one. So norm s dist, the smaller one, comma one, and it's going to give me the same result as if I put in 99.6 and 97.6, and then again on the outside, notice those values are the same. Coming up next, we're going to look at z-scores in reverse, which means we're going to have to determine a z-score based on a probability that we are given.